We've talked about the power of pollinators on Powering Virginia before, but we can't let this message get lost, especially not at a time like this. It is Pollinators Week, and I'm here with Christy Orcutt. She is the G Children's Garden Program Developer here at Lewis Ginter Botanical Garden. And wow, do you guys have an amazing setup, Christy? Well, thank you very much. We're very excited about our new educational apiary. It's our chance to bring bees to the forefront of the pollinator action community. Folks are familiar with bees. They might not be familiar with the concept of having an apiary. What is this? Well, an apiary is a location where we keep beehives, specifically honey beehives. A lot of folks have gotten more familiar with backyard beekeeping, getting more comfortable with having bees, and certainly appreciating the benefits, but bees aren't the only pollinators. Indeed not. There's butterflies, even bats, beetles, and oddly enough, even male mosquitoes. Hmm. So one thing they might be good for, but we'll get to that maybe another time. This garden is gorgeous. What is the point of having a community garden like this? Well, the benefit of our community garden is that we grow almost 10,000 pounds of food for Feed More. And we love that the apiary is located right next to it as that direct connection between pollinators and our food. Yeah. Timeliness is everything. It is National Pollinators Week that's going on all week long. Um, the, the apiary was recently dedicated, and so this is just a great time for folks to come out. What kind of educational program are you offering the kids? Are you offering the kids at heart so folks can learn about pollinators? Well, wonderfully, they can actually see bees in action right into a hive without having to encounter bees. So those who are working up to be becoming comfortable with bees, we have an observation hive with glass windows. And then also we offer programs inside the apiary. One of them is Show Me Your Honey, which uh, is for K through fifth grade groups during the summer. A really neat thing about coming out to this garden too, I've been super, super excited about it, is the way that it is set up. And it helps demonstrate that you don't necessarily have to have a gigantic plot of land to start gardening, to do a vegetable garden like this. Um, you can do it in containers. Indeed you can. Even a window box is sufficient to get your green thumbs going. And then containers like the type we have here, the galvanized containers from Tractor Supply or other local retailers, can be a great way to start your vegetable garden. This is not the only spot that you're um, particularly passionate about sharing this power of the pollinators message. You do this with some other groups in town. You are a beekeeper, in fact. I am. Yes, and then I helped found the Rockwood Backyard Beekeepers as well. And we have a honeybee festival coming up on June 25th at Rockwood. Rockwood Park that we're very excited about. Yeah, last last year we talked a little bit about Bumblebee Jamboree. We had visited that at Maymont. And then this, of course, is a separate event out at Rockwood and a lot of fun. A lot of folks come out every year. Oh, at least a thousand people. So we recommend that you come early and bring your strollers and really just have a good time learning about bees. And you can get your sources of local honey there too. Christy, I would imagine, because I'm one of these folks who can get nervous around bees, but being in a garden like this, you have the chance to at least interact and see that it can be done. It can. In fact, I too was terrified of bees as a child and I had to remember this little poem. Basically, black and yellow, which is the color of most bees, black and yellow, just be mellow. And when I find myself get feeling nervous, I just recite that poem to myself and it helps calm me because I understand how important bees are. Do you see the light bulb go off for folks when they do come in the garden and maybe they were nervous to be in and it can be that quick that it happens? It can. It takes a few minutes. I share with all the school groups that come here something about bees before they even see their first bee. And then they have some skills or tools that they can use so that when we're tasting and trying new foods in the garden, that if a bee buzzes by, that they're not distracted by that fear. And for a lot of the kids we were talking before we got started, they, um, when they come in, the reaction can be they just get so distracted by it. They can, and so one of the things I do is I tell children about my own fear that I had as a child, and I tell them I used to freak out, so everybody freak out for one second, and they do, they ah, and then once we get that out of our system, then I share with them what they can do to help stay calm around bees, and we even pick flowers and suck the nectar so that we're acting like bees, and they take their fingers and touch flower to flower to flower to move pollen around so that they're identifying with what bees are doing. Christy, what's the best way for folks to come out to Lewis Kinder Botanical Garden to, to appreciate the community garden here to see the apiary? What's the best way to come out? Oh, come out any day when the temperatures are nice 
and um, explore butterflies live and our Nature Connects exhibits as well. And come on out back behind the conservatory and visit the community kitchen garden and the apiary. Yeah, and you mentioned those window boxes too, a pollinator window box, a great idea. It is important for folks to start encouraging pollinators just to come everywhere, but especially to the backyard. I think so. Uh, we need those. They help make our food. They visit the flowers in our garden and help those plants produce fruits and seeds that we enjoy for our meals every day. Yeah, you've got a gorgeous spot right here and the pollinators that are coming are making a big impact in the garden itself. They are. They're really helping us produce more food here for the community. Terrific. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Happy Pollinators Week. Oh, wonderful. Interested in bringing some of those hardworking pollinators to your garden? It doesn't take all of this. We'll show you how to plant a pollinator pot coming up next on Powering Virginia.